Good morning, family. This is Ricky, and welcome to Hope for Today. I want to take you to a passage that you might have guessed we would never, ever go to in a morning Devo, which is truly designed to give you hope for today, to get your morning going, to give you a little a little taste of the gospel to help start you off on your day. It comes from Lamentations, <laughs> Lamentations chapter one, verse two. God here is speaking of his people, and he says in verse two, she weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks among all her lovers. She has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They have become her enemies. And then verse three says, Judah has gone into exile because of affliction and hard servitude. She dwells now among the nations, but finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all overtaken her in the midst of her distress. And I'm sure you are somewhere thinking, okay, Ricky had enough. Gonna go try another church's Devo because this ain't it. And I hear you, but stay with me because just maybe, just maybe God has something to say to you that you and I have not been willing to hear coming from the voice of God. And my point is this, if there are those of you watching today who find yourself in a lamentable predicament, in other words, there's something in life right now that has you sad, that has you grieving, that has you mourning. Lamentations is a book of scripture that reminds us that God sees, God knows, and God understands. You know, we're so blessed in our culture, right? Most of you watching here have a roof over your head and food on your table. And not many of us know what it means to truly suffer or be hungry. But the Bible reminds us that time and time again, life happens whereby all of a sudden, where our happiness is replaced with sadness, our joy is replaced with mourning. There will be seasons in our life where we just don't feel good. We're just not happy. We're just not hopeful. That is a part of life, so much so that Jesus wrote a whole book to remind us that he's still there when we're sad. He still is a part of our lives when we don't feel like moving on with our life. It's the idea that Jesus understands. My point is this, we've made suffering a bad thing when in actuality, suffering is only a hard thing. Did you hear that? You and I have eschewed suffering so much so that we've made it now a bad thing, a shameful thing, a, a, a pitiful thing, a, a, a thing that, that, that is so ghastly and grotesque. And although suffering is hard, nowhere in scripture does it say suffering is bad because it is a part of life. And here's the good news of the gospel. Jesus is not just the God of good times. He's the God of sad times and hard times and lamentable times, so much so that he penned an entire book of scripture just to help you and I understand how to keep on keeping on even when we are sad. And I say all this to say that if you're happy today, God bless you, God love you, God keep you as our prayer. Go get him today. But if that's not you, you've lost a loved one, or there's somebody that's sick, or you yourself are physically encumbered. There's a financial weight that's on you. There's decisions that need to be made and you don't know your way out. There's a child in a stressful situation, and of course, as a parent, it's stressing you as well. I want you to know that God understands pain. God understands sadness, and this is how much he understands it. He saw what we would go through and decided to send his son through the same ordeals to the point of death on the cross and resurrection therein so that anyone who is sad can look to the hope of what Jesus Jesus has done for you and find the strength you need to keep on keeping on through another day. I pray that even in the midst of pain and sadness, that this message has brought you hope for today. I'll see you next time.